guys welcome back to ride dirty mtb i hope you guys have enjoyed the content so far uh, i got a video for you guys today on um wolf Tooth's premium headset here i went ahead and i got this headset uh, because on my vetus i was having some creaking problems and i couldn't figure it out and i took it apart and it turns out that a lot of these i'm gonna assume most of these companies who put out a budget performance bike or something of that nature they're gonna kind of skimp out on some components to give you better components elsewhere and I did notice that with my bike in particular the headset cups are made out of plastic I don't know if it's ABS plastic or what type of plastic it is uh, but they're definitely plastic and the issue I'm having is this creaking gets worse uh, for a while and then I'll take it apart, re-grease it, put it back together and it gets worse again. And I noticed that the last time here in the past week I've been riding the bike, the actual cup on the down tube of the, I should say the lower part of the head tube is popping out. And I'll show you guys in the video a little bit later what I'm talking about. Now, mind you, I don't have my bike rack that didn't come yet from Amazon. I know, I went with a cheapie. I don't really like buying things from Amazon, but I needed a cheap bike rack. I've already spent enough money this week, so. Um, this headset was supposed to come in after the bike rack, but that didn't happen. Uh, Wolf Tooth actually shipped pretty quick from uh, Minneapolis and I was able to get it. And luckily enough, I have it here now, so I can go ahead and do a little walkthrough on these products. Uh, we'll be using the bike rack on my car to do the install of this product here. And it's not really gonna be a real detailed how to install these things. It's just gonna be kind of like a quick walkthrough on what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Mind you, again, I don't have all the proper tools. Some of these tools I'm making myself. I'll probably be welding some threaded rod here with a couple of bolts and washers to get this headset on and press it on. Uh, but with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this. All right, you guys, and here we are, the Wolf Tooth Premium Headset. These headsets are actually really nice looking and they look, uh, as they entail, premium. They don't look like cheap materials made at all. And best of all, they're made in Minnesota in the US. I like supporting uh, businesses in my country. I like ordering from small businesses. Um, I know if you guys are watching different countries, check them out, they're really good products as well. Um, these are made out of the Aircraft 6061 aluminum. Now, I don't know if that's a variant from the 6061 T6 aluminum that they use in frames. I could be just talking out of my hole here, but uh, from what I remember, aluminum frames are being made out of, I don't know if it's the same uh, type of aluminum or uh, same type of processing. They do come with their stainless steel bearings which I'll just pop up here, they're kind of greasy. Uh, they're called Enduro bearings. Now they do have a different bearing, which I'll look up the name of it for you here in a little bit, and they come in a black casing. What I like about these is on their website, they do say that they're lifetime warranted. Uh, I don't know what the lifetime warranty carries. I always tell people, if you're gonna buy these products, buy them from the company themselves. I ordered these directly from Wolf Tooth, and just in case something happens, I can get in direct contact with them. It seems like when you buy things off of Amazon or a third party, it kind of gets kind of tough to get a hold of somebody and get some type of work done as far as replacements or or some type of advice if you need it. Uh, the one place I have found some luck with, and I'm gonna start putting them in my video because I have purchased one or two things from them, is Worldwide Psychery. They are awesome. Their guys seem to know exactly what they're talking about. And every time I've purchased something to them, it's always been a pleasant experience. And I hate buying online because you never know where you're going to get. They have terrible service. But yeah, check them out as well. I'll put a link into that as well so you guys can look into their business. And they have a lot of cool products as well. Uh, but yeah, these are aluminum. These are anodized purple. And they come in a variance of colors here. These actually come in. Let me see if I can tell you now. They come in green, black red purple orange gold silver nickel nickel is almost like a polished silver but they don't have really good pictures to tell but i figured this would look nice on the gray and the black and go with the theme of the bike and they do say made in the usa these are the zs 56 zero stack and again i can go into a whole video on that i'm probably not the best person for that so i'll link the video and here is the upper headset with the cap this does come with a spacer cap I'm going to take this apart here. There we go. This is just a little bolt to hold it in. Here's your spacer cap. Real nice product. 
and it does come with a star nut in case you need it. I'm not gonna be using it since I already have one and they have this nice little 3D printed holder, which we'll just set aside here. This is the actual upper. I don't know if you guys can capture the color. It's really, really vibrant purple. This is bearing up there. I'll pull this off and it's got a nice seal in here. Keep all the dirt out. And when I take off the Vetus' headset, you'll be surprised as to the difference in parts here because these are all metal parts and aluminum, whereas the Vetus, this actual compression ring is made out of plastic in the Vetus right now, and I think it's one of the source of problems that I have with all the flex. And here's the upper bearing, the, their Enduro bearing, which is lifetime warranty according to them on their website. And you can see that, it says Enduro. And their cup, man. These are pretty nice little cups that they have with here. Or I should say they come with. Now, Wolf Tooth does include a couple of shims here in case you need them for whatever reason to go in here. If you're having clearance issues or whatever the case may be. And it comes with this black bolt that goes in there. It's a nice little satin color. It's not shine. It's not like pure gloss or anything or a nasty matte that's gonna collect rust. It's actually a really nice finish to this bolt. Again, a really good product. I'm really happy I went with this company. I'm impressed. Now I do have a couple spacers here from Wolf Tooth as well, and they've got four spacers, which is kind of nice. Uh, these are aluminum as well, and a nice purple. And on the bottom, they say made in Minneapolis, USA. And this one's a 15 millimeter. You also have a 10 millimeter. You have a five millimeter and a three millimeter, which is kind of nice that they give you all these spaces. I ordered another brands and they only came with a bunch of little ones this big. Uh, they came with four or five millimeters and there's either too much or too little. So I'm kind of glad they put four spaces in there. But that's a product. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start with this bike. I'm gonna put the bike rack back in the car since it's gonna be my work stand for the day. It's kind of ridiculous, but whatever. And I'll start tearing that one down and I'll do a little bit of a comparison between the two headsets as soon as I get it off and kind of a quick how or walkthrough or how to or whatever you wanna put it yourself as. apart here. So uh, first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and start taking apart my front brake lever. And the only reason I'm doing that is because it's gonna make it easier to I actually drop the bar and drop the fork and I don't have to worry about dangling things. So I'll take my grip off here, set that on my car workbench. As you guys can see my cool little uh, <laughs> workshop um, repair stand that never came in. That's used my car, I guess. But it seems to work, it'll do the job. So we'll go ahead and get this brake lever off. And give ourselves some room to work here. Just take that down. Don't have to undo the bars. We're gonna to to take this top cap off. We'll set this aside somewhere on the workbench. What's funny is that I've had this I've had this park tool, I don't know, for like 12 years. <laughs> I still have it. Now we're gonna go ahead and Loosen the bottom bolt off and then before I get all that going I'm gonna take my wheel off as well Just so I don't have to worry about that caught giving me more weight on this fork And we'll go ahead and take off these forks these marzukis <laughs> Marzuchis no, no, it seems like some people can't get the name right neither can I Pull this aside. And I'm just gonna let that hang there gently. Put the spacers there. And we're gonna go ahead and take off this top cap off this Acros uh, headset. Now I've tried to look up some information on this headset and I can't seem to find very much on it. So I just noticed that it has a bunch of plastic components. I'm gonna grab a piece of wood. 
gently tap this out. Come back up. Take this out here. Drop the fork. And that's why I take the brake lever off right there, you guys. So you take it off as one unit, set it aside. And that's our uh, fork taken off. But I don't know if you guys can see right there, it's actually split apart and broken. That's a no go, that's bad news. So, and we're just gonna take our hammer and our press and just go along the edge and just lightly tap it. Now, well, like I said, I'm sure they make a tool for this, but I don't have it. There you go. There is a whole setup right there. Just set this aside. Now we'll knock out the top one. Just light taps, you don't have to go crazy. Just try to go around it a couple times here so you don't you're not just hitting one spot and causing it to oval out. Just like that. Alright, so we got this uh, Acros headset off the bike and we're gonna take a look at it and compare the two. So uh, here's the upper headset cap and the bearing. Now the bearing doesn't look like anything wrong with it, it looks like a bearing that's sealed. Not a big deal. The issue with these are the plastic caps or cups, I should say. And I, I don't know what kind of plastic this is, if it's ABS plastic, but it's a hardened plastic of some sort. And the top, the top uh, cup here looks just fine. But we can compare it to the wolf tooth. And you can see the quality. I mean, it's way different, way better quality. And it's aluminum gonna last longer it's gonna be stiffer than this plastic is this plastic I'm sure it's gonna give some when you land hard or you're doing something crazy now the top cap plastic as well and it's got this little skimpy little seal on the inside and it doesn't even look like it's got a seal on the outside to protect the bearing so yeah how about that the wolf tooth's got a nice little seal on the inside and on the outside, that gray seal. So two seals will protect you from moisture, dirt. And of course, doesn't mean moisture can't get in here. Just make sure you grease these things up nicely before you put them in. We'll go over that when we install it. And last but not least will be the compression part on the top of the tube. Now this does have a little bit of a seal and it's supposed to protect, but I don't know if you guys can capture that on the camera there, but it actually looks like it's kind of torn up here, kind of worn. You see that there. And this is that compression ring I was telling you about that's kind of garbage on this thing. It's made out of plastic just like everything else. It flexes. I mean, look at that thing. And when you compare that to the Wolf Tooth product, it's a way nicer made product. Uh, I believe it's a CNC piece of, of aluminum and gonna be much stiffer more robust than whatever is in there now whatever the hell this thing is I'll throw that to the side now the lower cup this is where I had the problem and it's gonna be really really clear when you look at it where the issue was and there you go I don't know if you can see that right there I think it's shredded garbage just plain old garbage So we're going to go ahead and install it with this guy here, which is way nicer. So we're working on this fork here and I figured I was going to skip over the low race, but I figured I'd go over it with you guys. 
So this is the lower rate that goes on the fork and you're going to have to pull it off to put the new wolf tooth one on. Now this fork does have a little improvision here where you can stick a small flathead screwdriver and kind of work it up a little bit and work your way around it. These things aren't easy to get off so just take your time. Go at it from different angles bit at a time until it comes off. Now when you go to put the new one in, I like to use this um, Park Tool Poly Lube. Um, I use it on all my stuff here when I do any assembly on the bike. But when you make sure you put a nice thick coat on there and slide it on and get it to where it's just nice and level. Like I said before, I don't have all the fancy tools, so I'm just going to use what I have. and. My partial experience working with BMX bikes back in the day, which was years ago. I'm just going to go ahead and use a little piece of wood. Just lightly tap it around. All you got to do is just tap it in. Just tap it in. And you'll see all that grease coming out the bottom. Now the one thing I didn't show you guys with the difference with this wolf tooth seal is I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's only one little lip on the seal, whereas the wolf tooth has two seals. So, overall, a better product. Now, it looks like it's fully seated almost. So, this is my contraption here to get this headset on. And it's no, to me, the zero stack headsets when you got a press in the cups and is no different from the early day BMX bikes that I used to work on. And mind you, this is my first mountain bike. I've never had a mountain bike before. So very similar. I know there's other type of headsets. Like I said before, there's, you can run a whole video length of different headsets, but the zero stack is fairly simple to put in. You just got to press them in. Now, there's a couple methods you can go about this. You can go ahead and Use a hammer and wood and tap it in gently. Don't go hammering these things because you will oval something out or mess something up you shouldn't be. Um, or you can make your own press out of dowel, uh, threaded dowel rod like I was going to, but I figured this would be easier. You can use a C-clamp. You could buy the actual tool to do it, or you could just take it to your local bike shop if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, this is a job that somebody can do if you have some type of mechanical understanding and you've kind of done something similar but give it a shot at your own risk i always suggest like i said before if you can work on your own bike it's going to save you a ton of money and you're always going to figure out your issues a lot quicker than someone else but we're going to go ahead and thread this thing in and press these cups in nice and slowly now with the wood and the system i'm using here you might have to take apart this whole wooden system here and readjust occasionally because everything's not lined up perfectly obviously but we're going to do the best that we can to get this rolling. Kind of barbaric and caveman way of doing things, but that's usually how I do things. Just try to make sure they're always centered where you're trying to get them to go. You don't want them going in there at a weird angle. See that top cup is almost in. Bottom one's gonna need a little bit of work. Let's see, there's the grease coming out. Let's go ahead and adjust. And all I'm doing here is moving this out this way so I can push the back of the cup a little more in. There you go. It's just about in. All right, so I did have to get a pair of vice grips here to grab on this handle because my hands are slipping due to the grease. But let's go ahead and give it a couple light turns here. Nothing too crazy. And there goes all that grease squeezing out of those cups and the frame. And that's how you know you're well seated in, in the frame. Let's go around it real quick, make sure everything's out of there. All that grease is squeezed out, everything's sitting flat. And we'll go ahead and take this off. And again, my, my advice to you guys is get the right tool for the job, especially if it's your first time. 
it'll be more uh, confidence inspiring if you've got the right tools to do the job the way it's supposed to. Me, I'm just a little more comfortable in doing things the caveman style. The way of the caveman. But, go ahead and wipe that off. We're gonna check for any gaps. And that looks pretty damn sharp, that purple and that gray. I'm glad I went with that color. I'm gonna go ahead and take these off and regrease them. I know it comes factory with grease, but I like to grease everything myself, so. Go ahead and take this off here. I'm gonna wipe out the factory grease that came with it. Put some of that part goodness in there. And be generous with your grease. This will prevent any creaking or any type of issues in here. And most importantly, this grease acts as a um, barrier for water not to get in here and screw things up. Water is your enemy and so is dirt and grime. Even if Put a nice little bead in there. Just be careful not to get it all over yourself just like that. I'm actually pretty shocked at how nice that purple looks on there. All right, you guys, now we're gonna go ahead and get this fork on. I have the bearing on the actual race on the fork. We're gonna go ahead and slide this through. Make sure that bearing sits nice there, nice and flush. We're gonna get our shim. Put our shim in here. Make sure everything's clean when you guys put this in. You don't want any grease, any dirt or anything grinding up in here. Then we're gonna take our cap. Put this cap on. Now I'm gonna wipe a little bit of this grease off here. And we're gonna go ahead and slide that on. I'm a little weird, I like to have my, I want the wolf tooth here facing forward with the other two wolf tooth symbols on the side. It's all personal preference, I'm just a weirdo like that. And we're gonna go ahead and get our spacers on. I've got the 15 millimeter and the five millimeter. I'm gonna try to orient that with the wolf facing the front. You can do whatever you want, just my preference. And we'll go ahead and slide the stem on. And that's perfect. It's just about right. Now the cap itself acts as a spacer as well. So if you need to bring this here to come up above the stem, you can because this has a little spacer built into it. But I'm not going to be doing that. I think I like the way it looks there. And we'll just put that on there. And we'll screw it on. This way, this whole thing doesn't drop out of my hands. And we can get to adjusting everything as needed. Well, that looks pretty sharp so far. Looks pretty good. All right, so we've gone ahead and wiped all this grease off of here. I've kind of oriented everything where I wanted it. And I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling everything and putting the wheel back on and the lever back on. This way I can put the bike on the ground and see how much preload to put on this cap. Now you don't wanna go too crazy with this cap because if you tighten it too much, you'll kind of prematurely wear those bearings and cause some issues. At the same time, you don't want it too loose because then it'll get a lot of play and Again, create a lot of premature wearing that you probably don't need. So we're gonna go ahead and slide this brake lever back on here and I'm not gonna tighten it back on until I get the, lev the uh, grip. I'll try to match that up to how I had it before. And we'll tighten that sucker up. And I'm not going to tighten this all the way just because I need to get the bike on the ground and see where everything needs to go. 
Well, we'll go ahead and get our wheel on. And again, I'm sorry my bike is dirty. It is ridden. We'll go ahead and get our boost axle back in. All right, guys, and that's it. That's the uh, headset install with the Wolf Tooth Premium headset. It does feel a lot smoother, I'll say that much. It might have something to do with these crappy $25 components, but could just be me, could be placebo. We'll see what happens when we get on the trails and it actually uh, does its thing. But we're gonna do some videos here in the future. I already have them, I just gotta edit them and put them up on a couple different parks. Jonathan Dickinson and Jupiter, Camp Murphy trails and Pinehurst and West Palm. And I'll be doing a full ride through the entire trail and cutting it up through different sections so you guys can see what trails are there, what they look like, and uh, there won't be much talking, it's just gonna be straight ride through, uh, which should be kind of cool for you guys to check out. I do have this GoPro 9 now and it takes awesome video, so it's almost gimbal-like when you ride with it on a chesty mount. This is pretty awesome. Uh, but come back and check us out on, on the channel, you know, hit the subscribe button, like our videos, leave some comments. What headset are you riding? Are you riding into spaces? What company? What bike do you have? Did you have someone install it for you or did you install it yourself and was it a pain in the ass or was it not? Either way, let us know. Come back to the channel, check us out. Get out there and ride.